My name is Agnes Nyanga. I'm 36 years old. I'm Zambian. I'm a nurse midwife by profession. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of Nations is that for the past 25 years, that was when I was about 11 years old, I've been addicted to eating sand soil and red soil. And also I've been addicted to sniffing of dust and eating dust. It all started when I was sweeping around the house outside and the wind blew and the voice spoke into me saying, this is good for you. And I just sniffed that dust and I enjoyed it. And from that time onward, I enjoy being where there is dust. That's why I want to be. And one day as I was walking around, I saw an anthill and the voice spoke into me, the same dust that you sniff, you can also eat this so it's good for you. I couldn't resist it because the craving was so strong. And I took that soil, I dug, and I started eating. From that time, it just became part of my food. And one day, as I was walking, walking around the market, I saw some sun so I didn't know what it was, but the voice spoke into me that I need to eat it also. It's the same with the same thing that I eat. So I bought and started eating. I would prefer I'm eating this sand or the soil without eating any food. Especially when I eat a meal with salt, this desire comes so much that I even start salivating for it. Even when I go for work, sometimes the desire would come and saliva would come. And because of being imbalanced, I just got and went aside where they couldn't see me and I ate. From that time, that's when my friend knew that I eat, but they don't know how strong I eat it. Man of God, I've seen a lot of people being delivered on Emmanuel TV. That's why I came here. Please deliver me. I know that my health is in danger as a medical personnel. It has caused me to develop hemorrhoids because I've got problems when going to the toilet, and I developed hemorrhoids. And also the soil itself has got bacteria. But the craving so much that I cannot st stand it. I just go for it. I've gone for many deliverances, but to no avail. Please, man of God, I beg you, deliver me. I have it in my bag. I came in with it. 36-year-old Agnes Inyanga from Zambia has been addicted to eating sandstone, red soil, sniffing and eating dust for the past 25 years. She reached into her handbag and pulled out a plastic bag filled with sandstone to prove her abnormal eating addiction that has damaged her health by developing hemorrhoids in her body which has led to a problem when going to the toilet. Agnes picks up a sandstone out of her plastic bag to demonstrate how she eats them. Regardez votre écran, cette femme qui a cette addiction à manger de la terre et du sable, l'a voyant manger en direct, preuve qu'elle a cette addiction depuis 25 ans. Wow. Esta mujer adicta a comer tierra durante 35 años. Observe la pantalla en este momento mostrándonos well, cómo comer. You, you have seen it. Come on, come here. We need to realize this and speak in keeping with this power. According to what? Speak according to this power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you see what I'm talking about? That is authority I'm talking about. That is power and authority. Can you see? This is what I'm talking about. Far, far from there. He has been to many places. If authority can remove it, it will have removed it. But... When you ask her, she will tell you that for a long time they have been saying, don't go to synagogue. There is not a place of God. But those are authority in the amount of people. But authority will hold you for some time and later release you to power. Do you see? That is the spirit. 
if I come here in the name and authority of Jesus without power, I will be disgraced. I will say be delivered and she will not be delivered. And Easter, she will deliver me. Now it's free now. In Jesus' name, amen. You're back on the floor. Watch your screen. See, 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 see her. the expression. See her. She never knew what she was doing. If you not give her that sign now, it's like you give her cheat. You see? Because the spirit that is tormenting her is gone. They see her. They see her. They see her. Watch the screen. You see her looking with surprise. What happened to you? I just felt a strong uh, feeling in my body. You? And all my body organs became, just became rigid. Oh, what you are doing like a tiger. You don't know. Man of God, I don't know. So I could not control about it. The animal that eats sand and soil has gone. Amen, man of God. Amen. Thank you. You know, spirit of animal that eats sand, soil, was living inside her. That animal, that is what she was demonstrating. Okay, can you give the son? How does he feel now? Ah, he doesn't want to collect it. Acabamos de ver la liberación de esta mujer después de 25 años de comer tierra. Está por probar de nuevo esa tierra. Ah, it's in the spirit. Oh, look at, look at the body is shaking. Let him carry, it. carry it. He's shaking. Gadil, l'homme de Dieu a demandé a cette femme de toucher au sable. Elle ne devait même plus le prendre. Watch your screen. Close your eyes and put it in mouth. Agnes, after receiving deliverance in the power of the Holy Spirit, tries her best to eat another sandstone, but fails miserably as the disgusting flavor has now dawned on her taste buds. Man of God, thank you so much. God richly bless you. I'm delivered. The age is gone. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Agnes washes her hands and has a drink of fresh water to wash out the remaining sandstone in her mouth. Now that she has been delivered from the demonic creature that had been the cause of her bizarre, unhuman-like addiction of eating sandstone, red soil, and sniffing and eating dust for the past 25 years, she no longer has the unruly possessive urge to eat them. She now enjoys a normal delicious plate of rice and chicken to her former menu of sandstone and red soil appetizers, which caused a growth of hemorrhoids in her body. As Christians, we are the greatest product of the Holy Spirit, created to be master over every power of darkness in the world. Defeat and failure are now things of the past in her life. To God be the glory. Emmanuel. The message is all about authority and power. Let's quickly look at uh, the book of Luke 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Wow. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. These are the demonic activities. And he said to them, take nothing for the journey, neither staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money. It takes someone who has personal experience of this issue of authority power to explain, apart from the one you have read so far. I will look at it from in the secular world, coming back home again in the ministry. Because when you talk of authority in the secular world, it's a different thing. Authority will be meaningless without power behind it. 
authority will be what? Without what? Without power behind it will be meaningless. So let's look at this from circular world there. The reason why our government officials can exercise their authority over us is because some place behind them a man with the power of the gun. You are here today because you have seen much or little of TV Joshua on Emmanuel TV preaching the gospel, the righteousness of God. My you, anyone can preach this. For God to see me the same way you see me, it takes power. No power, no relationship. Our reward for relationship with Jesus is power. Tell your neighbor, my reward for relationship with Jesus is power. You know, after when you work in the companies, at the end of the day, you call it salary, that is reward. Your reward for relationship with Jesus is power. To know God is to know his power. My you, knowing facts about God does not change your relationship with him. Say, God is savior, God is a healer, God is a deliverer, God is this, God is that. People say, hey! You know everything about God, my you. Knowing facts about Jesus does not change your relationship with him. Being a preacher and historical about Jesus does not change your relationship with him. An effective witness not only knows his faith, but shows his faith. Tell your neighbor, an effective witness not only knows his faith, but shows his faith. I want to pray with you. Lord, help you to witness in both way and life. Amen. Close your eyes and say, Lord, Lord help, me, help, me, help me to witness, to witness in, both in both way and life. That is prayer you should offer from time to time. Lord, help me to witness in both ways and life. It is God's power working through his word and his spirit that brings about power to heal, to deliver. When you hear, be healed. If the person is healed, it is God's power working through his word and his spirit that brings about that. God's word refreshes our mind and God's spirit renews our strength. When you hear, be healed. And the person says, I can see, I can see, I can see. What brought about that? It is God's power walking through his way and his pity that brings about that deliverance. It's not because you have the word, but you must have God's spirit. Not only must you have God's word, in order to be pastor, you must have God's spirit. Tell your neighbor, not only must you have God's word, in order to be pastor, in order to be a Christian, not only must you have God's word, in order to be born again, you must have God's spirit. It is God's power working through his word and spirit that brings about healing, deliverance, salvation. Nothing can be achieved from God or power of God without through his will by his spirit. Remember what we are talking about? Authority and power. When the Holy Spirit took residence within us, 
He did so with the thought of aiding us in developing a holy character. In that Romans 7 verse 15, Paul Apostle said, no one can say no to sin unless he is guided by the Holy Spirit. So this is why when someone is caught in a mistake, you that caught him or her should restore him gently so that you too will not make the same mistake. When anyone is caught out of sin, you that caught him must restore him gently, gently, so that you also will not be tempted because no one can say no to sin unless he is guided by the Holy Spirit. So can you say, when you now see a drunkard, drunk says, ah, look at this man, he's a drunkard, foolish man. Wow, you will soon be a drunkard too. Because the reason why you will soon become a drunkard, you are telling the world that it's by your power you are not a drunkard. And no one can without the Holy Spirit. I want you to rise up and say, Holy Spirit of faith, forgive my doubt. Holy Spirit of love, forgive my hatred. Holy Spirit of humility, forgive my pride. You may be seated. We pray that Holy Spirit impress His law in our heart. Holy Spirit, pour into me the treasure of your grace. Holy Spirit, enlighten me with your divine inspiration. Holy Spirit, inspire in me the practice of virtues. Holy Spirit, grant me the grace of all virtues. To show that it's not by power. The song say, not by power, not by my not by my, not no by power, by, by my spirit, spirit says the Lord. Thank you. More about this circular world. Authority. You have likely seen a school monitor or someone who is put in charge, in charge outside their main authority of a group of students, but had no power. We put many of our teachers to this position. They have authority over students. They do not have very much over them to back that authority. This is why today parent takes teachers to court for disciplining the student. Authority and power really must go hand in hand. Authority without power is worthless. When we open the book of Luke 4, let's quickly look at verse 36 there. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word this is. For with authority and power, he command the unclean spirit, and they come out. Jesus, our Savior, not only had authority over unclean spirit, but also had power to force them to come out. Power to force evil spirit to come out. 
whether they like it or not. They must come out. This is what we are seeing here. When it is time for deliverance, you say, no, I'm not going out. No, I'm not going out. Why do you want to take me out? Why, why? The first step out. The point of all this is that not only we have authority over disease and demonic activities, but we have power of God to actually control them and to tell them where to go and they will obey. To tell them where to go, shh, this way, and they must obey. In that Luke 20, Jesus did not give us a powerless authority. Jesus did not what? I can hear you. He did not give us a powerless authority. We need to realize this and speak in keeping with this power. Take note of that way. We need to realize this and speak in keeping with this power. That is according to this power we must speak. If I want to speak, in the name of Jesus, this must be done according to this power. In line with this power. If not, our ministry will be full of empty talk. <laughs> Take note of that. Jesus did not give us a powerless authority. We need to realize this and speak in keeping with this power. Speak according to this power. In line with this power. If not, our ministry will be full of empty talk. And there will be great danger of waste in prayer. That is, prayer that does not give any result, but oftentimes causes destruction. If I'm speaking to you, let me see your hand. Prayer that does not give what? Prayer that does not give any result, but oftentimes causes destruction. You say, in the name of Jesus, you devil. And devil will think that, uh, hey, when they hear, in the name of Jesus, you devil. Devil, hey, who is shouting in the name of Jesus? Who devil? And by the time devil realize that you are talking not according to this power. Remember several sons of Skeba. Remember seven sons of Sceva, what happened to them? They were going about saying, in the name of God of Paul, in the name of God of this, in the name of God of this. One day, the evil spirit realized that uh, oh, they were speaking not according to this power. They were speaking not in line with this power. And when our prayer it's not in line with this power. It's superficial. <laughs> At the end of the day, you have headache? Superficial. You hear yourself, people around you will hear you, but God does not hear you. If not, here is great danger of waste in prayer. Take note of that. If your prayer are not according to the truth of God's word, they will be idle, meaningless, oftentimes destructive. Is it not clear that God talk without art is outrageous nonsense? 
no sense. To confess Jesus is Lord, but behave in a contrary manner. Tell your neighbor, it is no sense confessing Jesus is Lord, is this, is that, but behave in a contrary manner. Not everyone who speaks in the spirit is a pastor. Only the person who is a pastor is the one working in the will of the Lord. This is why everyone who claims to be pastor, to be evangelist, to be Christian, to be born again, must be tested by biblical criteria, rule, standard. What is your test? Your could be persecution, your could be intimidation, your could be insult, your could be this, your could be that, where? Your dry pit, your potify house. Everyone who claims to be pastor, to be prophet, to be evangelist, to be this, to be that, must be what? By what? Biblical what? Biblical criteria. I mean, biblical rule, biblical standard. Let me encourage you. Read your Bible slowly. Tell your neighbor, read your Bible slowly. Bible is not a novel or history. I want to finish it. I want to finish it. Don't and Paul. Oh, no, no, you can't get it like that. Read your Bible slowly. Read your Bible slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. And when you are reading, you must have a jotter around you. No matter how brilliant you are, this is a book of books. The more you read, the more you understand yourself and this God who created you. No spiritual passage exists in a vacuum. I mean, emptiness. Tell your neighbor, no spiritual passage exists in a vacuum. Take your time to read slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. Respond to him in dialogue. <laughs> Respond to him in what? God is there. Respond to him in dialogue. This is as much about listening as speaking. In conclusion, if you have taken God's way to have and truly made it part of you, it will by its nature, change you. And when it does, you will find yourself called to act. Get God's opinion, work with his project, be here, be delivered, be this, be that. Called to his work, to his project, like you will be called to bar, so you will be called to his project. Get his idea. Tell your neighbor, live in God's way. Open your Bible and read to hear what God has to say to you each day. If you have not opened your Bible to read, you have not heard the direction, what to do, where to go. Read to know, to discover, what God has to say 
to you each day. I want to believe that now you can see what the power and authority is all about. In our dealing with disease and demonic activities, talk of sickness, talk of this, talk of that, talk of that, we do not only need to say, I am coming in the name and the authority of Jesus, but of power. Rise of up. If your faith is lifted up, let him hear you. Thank you, Lord. Bow down your head and say, oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of faith, forgive my doubt. Holy Spirit of love, forgive my hatred. Holy Spirit of humility, Holy Spirit of humility, forgive my pride. Help me, Lord, to witness in both where and life in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.